Hey guys, Techniverse back again. Today's video we are going to be covering the full release version of Kira 4.5. Now this is what's considered a stable release, but it's important that you know if you come across any bugs or errors to go into the top menu and file that bug report so that the software developers can find it and fix it. Um, there are always a couple of little bugs with the new version of Kira, but the point here is iteration. They are always upgrading, improving, adding new features, and in order to do that, you have to sometimes, well, break things. So uh, we'll forgive them for anything we come across. Like I said, make sure you report those bugs if you find any. And on a side note, I have also been spending a lot of time getting another playlist ready for you. If you stick around until the end of this video, you will see a card for a playlist called Kira Settings in 5 Minutes in le or Less. And in that playlist, there is one video covering each section of the settings in the advanced custom Kira settings. Uh, and there are 13 of those. There are 13 sections. Eventually, there will be one video on every single setting available in Kira that goes over it with examples and explanations in five minutes or less. So that'll definitely be a good resource to bookmark in the future. And if you ring that bell for notifications now, you can get notified every time we post a new video. As I said, you can get the gist of what all of these settings do by jumping over to that playlist now and checking out the setting topics because I do run over the important settings in each section. So that being said, we're going to jump into Kira 4.5 right now and I'm going to show you some of the new features as well as some examples and differences between what they do versus what they used to do and we'll check a couple other things out as well. So stick with me and we're going to have some fun guys. One of the first new settings they've added we're going to go over is called Skin Edge Support. Now, if you look at this model here, it is my calibration cube. It is available for download on Thingiverse. It's pretty simple. It just has a hot end on one side. X, Y, Z axis is listed. Now, we are looking top down. Uh, so this will be the top surface you're looking at here. We are on layer 111. And if you notice, this Skin Edge Support thickness is set to zero. This is the new setting we're playing around with right this second. And as you can see... Uh, without it set, there is nothing showing up on this layer. There are several more layers before the model finishes. Uh, but if I were to go and turn this on to 0.4, it's going to recommend three layers of skin edge support. We'll slice it again. You should see the outline of the Z letter that appears on the top surface. And there it is. Uh, we can actually scroll down and see it in a couple layers previous to this as well. Now that's 110. It's already started to put it down. Uh, that is the skin edge support and what that is going to do is help support these corners on the Z here and it will help improve the model's top surface quality because this will be a little bit more even because it will have a couple more layers backing it up. So this is a very handy tool to use and to have. I definitely recommend trying it out if you're printing something that has a lot of angles on it or top surfaces or indentations like this one or pop outs things like that. It works great and is definitely an asset to Kira 4.5. The next new feature we're going to cover is skin distance. Now, if you look here, it is set to 10 millimeters. That is the standard, and it is 10 millimeters away from the model. This is pretty simple and self-explanatory. We're going to go over it anyways. Basically, what I'm going to do is take this. I'm going to multiply it by one. We're going to take one of them and move it. Then we're going to slice again and we should still get the 10 millimeter skirt difference. Let's go back to preview mode and as you can see it wraps around both of them. Now let's take that down to 2 millimeter and it's slicing. This is just a quick example of what this setting does. You can notice it's moved in a lot closer to the models giving us a lot more room on the outside if we wanted to add more models, rearrange things, things like that. You can bring this in and hit zero. And the cool thing about this is it is now acting like a brim, but only on the outer edges. So the inside is not attached to anything. This makes this super easy to remove, keeps you a few cleaner, straighter edges here. Um, Odds are, if this is a larger model I'm printing, this is going to be the center of the build plate, uh, meaning that the heat will be pretty even there, and these corners shouldn't really lift anyway, but all of your outer edges towards the cooler part of the build plate 
should in theory be held down by this uh, skirt at zero distance. Now this is a feature that was uh, given to the people at Kira by a company called Smart Avionics. Um, they also added the skin edge support, so that's pretty interesting as well. We are going to jump over to the next setting now. The next setting we're going to be discussing is another one contributed by Smart Avionics. It's nice to see other people contributing settings that people have been asking for in the community for a while. And this setting is the sparse bridging control. So basically, uh, if you go up here into your settings and type in bridge, you will get this enable bridge settings right here. If it's not turned on, you're going to want to go ahead and click it. And by clicking that, you're going to get all these other settings here. And the one we're looking at is bridge sparse infill max density. Right now, mine is set to 20%. My infill is set to 10%, which is below the mass max density. So it is going to use bridge sparse infill. It's going to consider this infill to be sparse, which means too far apart, too few between. And basically, it's going to use bridging settings to do the top surface over this infill instead of using the regular printing settings and what that means is when it's bridging it's going to slow down it's going to use more fan and it's going to move a little bit more deliberately uh, in order to lay down filament that is not drooping or melting into these crevices here which is why sometimes if you have sparse infill on your top surface you get little droops in between the infill uh, barely noticeable but you can sometimes feel them and this is a good fix for that it will print with better quality on the top surface of less filled objects and for a couple other features you may be interested in uh, there is a shared heater setting uh, this is basically for uh, should be under dual extrusion this is for heaters that heat the same hot end for two different extruders. So basically you're pushing two different kinds of filament into the hot end and using the same heating element to heat that nozzle. Um, that setting is somewhere in here. I don't have a dual extruder on, so you'll have to dig in there and play with that yourselves. There is another dual extruding one that is uh, the material mixing, which is a new post-processing script that can be used to mix materials if you have a mixing nozzle. So that's cool as well. Those are pretty handy to have. Uh, I do hope to get an IDEX machine here pretty soon so we can play around with those, but for right now, you're kind of on your own in that department. There are a couple of other things, such as a fuzzy skin on the outside only. Now, this model is big enough, but it doesn't have any holes. The fuzzy skin on outside only basically is going to do the same thing that fuzzy skin has always done, except if you have a part with an interior hole into it where you are meant to screw something or it's meant to fit over something else it will not print the fuzz in that hole so that's basically what it does is it does not print fuzz on uh, cavities that are into the interior of the object or pass through the object like screw holes and things like that which keeps your dimensional accuracy so the parts actually fit and that's kind of nice that is actually really nice uh, it's always good when the parts fit right um, there are a bunch of other additions by Smart Avionics. They really contributed a lot to this version, and the improvements that I've seen uh, are marked improvements. Everything is working pretty well, other than that one error I get once in a while, which I've gotten in all the other versions saying cannot slice, and all you have to do is move your model around a little bit and slice again, and generally it works pretty well. Um, there have also been a few performance updates. They've sped up loading of plugins. Let's see if we can illustrate that real quick. If I hit marketplace, we'll see. Uh, they now have crash logging and scene re-rendering, a new performance enhancement that limits re-rendering of the application interface. So it doesn't update constantly while the model is sitting still. It'll only update when you rotate it, which means that it's not wasting memory, constantly redrawing the same picture on your screen over and over again. Um, there are a bunch of other things that they added, but most of them are minute features that you may or may not notice. You can see the marketplace is loading. It's not loading super fast for me, but that's my connection. Uh, and you will also notice on load up of Kira 4.5 that the startup of the actual software itself is a little bit faster. And that is actually thanks to some software that was given to them uh, in order to help. There we go. Load the plugins 
even faster. Now that's the fastest they've ever loaded for me, and even with my crappy connection, that is not bad. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So this is Kira 4.5. There is a lot to see. I'm not going to be able to go over every individual setting in the software in this video, but I do have a playlist if you have stuck around this long where you can see me go over each individual setting in the Kira settings in five minutes or less. So I'll put a card for that up in the top corner there. You can go ahead and click on that. It'll take you to the playlist and you can check it out. Uh, to start off, there are 13 videos in that playlist and they pretty much go over the main settings in each section of the custom settings in Kira. Um, in the future, I plan to add individual videos for each individual setting and we're going to start working on that in the next week or two here. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please leave me a like on this video, guys. We do Kira update videos every time Kira does an update and sometimes in between. We did a video on the beta this time. There were a couple things missing, such as a change log, so we were unable to exactly identify what the features were in that video, but we have since then uh, found a few things, and I totally credit Sergeant Killex, uh, one of my YouTube subscribers, for pointing out the list of changes that he found over on the 3D printing Reddit, and I thank you for that. There was another gentleman who posted the changes directly down below as well, and I thank him for his information as well. Uh, they do now have the change log available over on the GitHub, so you don't have to go digging for it. It's there. It is well-worded, well-written, and official. So if you'd like to see that, feel free to pop over there and check it out. And that's going to be it, guys. Technivorous out. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.